Hey, it's Mrs. Cat, and I'm here with one more look at worksheet two in unit six. Now we're going to look at the second part of this. So you've done numbers one through 10. You've now taken a little look at how to name and write formulas for compounds that are ionic. And now we're going to work kind of backwards from that name to get our chemical formulas and our individual ions. So you're still going to need your periodic table. You need your periodic table of ions. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this name that we've been given. In the case of number 11, we've got silver chromate, and we're going to find those individual ions, their charges, okay, and then count up what we need to get a neutral compound, write its formula, and then the last thing we'll do is count up the total number of ions and atoms. So looking at my periodic table of ions, I'm going to look for silver, which is a metal, and I'm going to see that silver has a charge of plus one. Okay, it is the first thing I'm going to write there. Okay, when I look at chromate, I don't find chromate on any part of the periodic table, but I am going to find it on my periodic table uh, or my table of polyatomic ions. I'm going to see that chromate is CrO4 and that it has a charge of negative two. Okay, so I'm going to draw my ions to start out with. So I've got silver with a plus one charge. Actually, that's a little dark. I'm going to actually kind of make this look silver. Here we go. Plus one charge. And then chromate, I want to show with having okay, one chromium, four oxygens. And then that whole thing is going to have a charge of minus two. Okay, let me zoom that in a little bit more. Okay, right now. Negative two with one positive charge is not neutral. That's going to have a charge of minus one. So I want to add in another positive charge from my silver to make this whole thing neutral. There's two things that we can do right now that we know that this is going to give us a neutral compound. Okay. The first thing I want to do is I actually want to count up the number of ions that I have. And we're going to put that over here on the right hand side. So notice, as I count these, I'm going to highlight them, okay, I have a total of two silver ions and one chromate ion. So that is three total ions that I have, okay? But if I count up the total number of atoms that I have, we want to count each individual particle, okay? So here, okay, each sodium, or each sodium, each silver is going to be one atom apiece, but the chromate has a total of five atoms, okay? So if we count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total atoms, okay? Whoops, apparently I erased my three ions. Okay, now that I've got that, let's draw in our formula unit picture, and then we'll finish up with our formula. So I'm gonna start with my chromate, since I have one of those, I'm actually going to start with my circle to show my whole polyatomic ion. There's one, two, three, four, okay, with a minus two charge. Remember, we want to have those positively charged ions of silver attached to the negatively charged polyatomic ion of chromate because opposites are going to attract. We also want to keep those silver ions as far apart as we can, so I'm going to put them at opposite ends. Okay, plus one charge here, plus one charge there. When we write our chemical formula, our positively charged ion is going to go first, which is silver. I have two of those, so I'm going to do a subscript of two. Only one chromate, so it's going to be CrO4, giving us that final formula of Ag2CrO4. Again, we can use that to help us count up our total number of atoms and ions. I like to do it personally from the pictures because I think it's a little easier to see. All right, make sure you've got this down, finish 12 through 15, and then submit and move on to our next item. Thanks, reach out if you need any help. Have a great day.